to send you lesson number one. You complete it. It's going to be a great Bible course for you. Get your Bibles. Get a piece of paper. I want you to do there's four things that we're going to look at uh, in this lesson today. And the title of it is this. Are there Christians in all denominations? Now, my friend, in Acts 2 and verse number 47... The Bible says, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I want you to look at that verse for a second. Now, we could we can spend a lot of time there. I'm not going to spend uh, a lot, but I want you to look at this verse one more time. The Bible says, the last statement in that is, and the Lord added to the church, not churches. He's not. He didn't add to whatever. He didn't follow that by whichever one you have chosen. He simply said, the scriptures say, all scripture by inspiration of God, and the Lord added to the church, to the church. I want you to, I want you to just write that down. Daily, such as should be saved. Now, why did I emphasize that? Well, I'm going to tell you why. There are more. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. There are more than 45. 5,000 denominations globally. Followers of Jesus span the globe. But the global body of more than 2 billion, now I'm using, I'm going to put this in quotation mark, 2 billion Christians, now watch this, the body of more than 2 billion Christians, now what we mean by Christian, I'm using that in a broad term, just simply those who believe that Jesus, or believe in Jesus, okay? So when you and I look at this passage of Scripture, or in this uh, statement, more than two billion Christians, but they're separated into thousands of denominations. And so someone comes along, they'll say, well, Brother Acuff, they're saved everywhere, they're saved in all these. Now I want to ask you a question. There's one book, there's one book, the Bible, The Bible is the Word of God. When you and I look at the Word of God, then we're going to, I, my prayer is, when we conclude this lesson, that you'll be motivated to do a little more study and a little research, okay? Number one, I'm going to define, I want to define for you denomination. Now, go with me to Ephesians chapter number four and verse number four. Look at what the Bible says. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. And then he goes on to say, uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Emphasize there's one body. One body. Now, just underline that in your mind. Ephesians chapter number 1, back up to that great book of Ephesians, go to chapter number 1, 22 and 23. The Bible says to put all things under his feet and give it to be head over all things to the body or to the church. Give it to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. You and I know that the church is the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, the Bible says there are many members, yet one body. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, Paul said, I beseech you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, denomination means division. Paul said, I beseech you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there be no division among you, but you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. It has been reported unto me of you, my brethren, by them of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Some say, I'm Paul, I'm Paul, I'm Cephas, I'm Christ. Paul said, I, I didn't baptize but a couple of you. Now paraphrase that. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see this. Because, now go back with me and read that again. I beseech you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there be no denominations among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, the same day. It's been reported to me of you, my brethren, by them of the house of Chloe, that there are denominations that some are saying, I have a Paul, I have Paulus, I have Cephas, I have Christ. You're divided. Paul said that's not right. That's not the way it's to be. John 17, Jesus in his prayer 
Jesus prayed this. He said, I pray that they all might be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they all may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, I pray that they all might be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe. I hold in my hand, ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Bible. I hold in my hand a Bible that has 66 books. This has been mentioned many times, written over a period of 1,600 years by 40 different writers, three different languages. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Bible. We have the Bible. You and I can go to the Bible. Let me give you an illustration of this. You can drive all over the United States, and almost at every exit, if you're on an expressway, there'll be a great big sign with an M. You, you and I know what I'm talking about, McDonald's. That's McDonald's. I have been in foreign countries, and I have been in McDonald's in foreign countries. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter what exit you get off in in the United States of America, and you go to McDonald's, and there's a Big Mac. It's fixed the same way whether you're in Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, California, North Dakota, it doesn't matter. How do they do that? Well, it's simple. They go to the McDonald University and they learn how to do it. And you buy a McDonald's, you're going to... Now, I want to ask this simple question. How come it is that we have one book, that one book says the same thing to you that it says to me, and, as a, and yet look at what we've got now. Let me give you something. I think I've got four things here I want to mention very quickly. Do not forget that denominations, ladies and gentlemen, are made up of churches. Churches are made up of people, and sometimes people just don't get along. They don't get along, so what do they do? Well, I don't like what you're doing. I'm going to go over here and start my own church. I remember the story about the old boy got stranded on an island. He was the only one on the island. And so we got on the island, and, he, he, and so when eventually they found him, and there were three buildings on that island, and, and what they were saying, well, what, what's the three buildings? He said, well, now this building over here, that's, that, I built that where to live. That's, that's my house. And they said, well, what about this other building? He said, well, that's where I went to church. That, that's, my, that's where I went to church. Well, they said, what about this other building over here? He said, well, I got mad at that church and I moved over and started another one. Well, that's just about the way it goes in our world today, folks. You see, people, people they get, well, I don't like this, and, I, and I'm going to start my own church. Let me give you another reason. Another, cre another reason Christians are sometimes divided is disagreements about secondary areas of belief or practice. What does baptism mean and who should get baptized, for an example? How should local churches be structured? Who should fill the leadership roles? How often should communion be practiced? How should certain passages in the Bible be interpreted? Now, ladies and gentlemen, all these are questions. And here's, listen to this. I found this statement on the internet. Of course, you can find anything on the internet. These are good questions, and the answers aren't. Now, watch this. This person said, regarding what I had just said, these are good questions, and the answers aren't always clear in the Bible. That is false. Ladies and gentlemen, that is false, because the answers are clear in the Bible. Let me give you a third thing. A third reason there are so many different groups of Quotation mark Christians exist. It's differences in personality, passions, and talents. You know, some people are more inclined uh, to worship God through the exercise of the mind. So I'm going to go and do what I want to do. See, ladies and gentlemen, let me give you an illustration out of the Bible. There were two men, one by the name of Paul and the other one Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas went on a missionary journey, and they took a fellow by the name of John Mark with them. When they, I don't know, they'd gone about maybe three or four places, I don't remember exactly, but John Mark said, I'm going back home. And he left. 
So they went ahead. They finished their missionary journey, came back. Later on, Paul said, let's go back and visit these churches. And Barnabas said, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. We're going to take John Mark. Paul said, nope. Nope, not going to take him. <laughs> nah, nope. Now I know. For you got to know the Greek to get it like that. I'm not going to take him. Here's what happened. Barnabas and John Mark started their own church. Oh, no, you know better than that. They didn't do that. Paul and Silas went one direction. Barnabas and John Mark went another. Both of them preaching and teaching exactly the same thing. As a matter of fact, later on, Paul said, bring John Mark. He's profitable to me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you one more thing. Certain types of people, they appreciate the structure and heritage of worship in God. Now watch this. According to traditions that's been passed down over generations, even centuries. So their idea is we're going to worship based on tradition. Do you see what's going on? When you and I look at denominationalism, what do we find? We find that all of this has come about, ladies and gentlemen, as a result of somebody saying, well, I want to do it my way, I want to do it my way, I want to... There's one way, ladies and gentlemen, that's the Holy Bible. Now, let me define... We define denomination. That's, that's what it is. Now, I want to define a Christian for it, because watch this. What our title said, are there Christians in these denominations? Well, let's, let's find out who is a Christian. The Bible says, Acts 11, verse number 26, the Bible says, And when he had found him, he brought him into Antioch, and it came to pass the whole year they assembled themselves together with the church, taught much people, but here's the step I want you to say. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Now keep that in mind. The disciples were called Christians where? First where? In Antioch. Now, the word Christian is actually only used three times in the New Testament. Acts 26, verse number 28, Then Agrippa said to Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. I want to ask you a question. What if Agrippa had said that day, Yes, sir, Ree, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be baptized for the remission of my sins. And as soon as he comes up out of the water, Paul said, Well, now I want to find out which church you want to go to. Oh, no, no, uh-uh. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Now, ladies and gentlemen, watch this. Then 1 Peter 4 and verse number 16, the Bible says, If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this behalf or in this name. Now, I want you to see something. Galatians 3 and verse 27, there's only one way to be a Christian. That's it. There's only one way. You, I mean, folks, you, you, there's a lot of things you can do, but there's only one way to be a Christian. Now, I want you to watch this. Galatians 3, 27, look at what the Bible says. For as many as you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. As many of you, now what, what's that? As many of you have been what? Baptized. Baptized into what? Into Christ. Have put on Christ. So what do we find? We find that when a person is baptized into Christ, a person is baptized into Christ, he puts him on. Now watch this. Cornelius, in Acts chapter number 10, he was a good man. The Bible said he prayed. He gave alms. He, the, I think the terminology in, in Acts chapter number 10, he was devout, ladies and gentlemen. He was a devout man. Now, there are many of you who may be watching this program and your thoughts are, man, he was a good Christian. No, he wasn't a Christian. He was not a Christian. So what did he do? God, it's stolen. You go to Joppa, send a man. He's going to come tell you words whereby you and your house can be saved. He was lost. He was, he was a good man, but he wasn't saved. So Peter comes and Peter tells him what to do. What happens? They're baptized. That's what they're doing. That's what happens. They were baptized. They were baptized into Christ. You know, the Ethiopian eunuch. Let me, let me use the Ethiopian eunuch as an illustration. The Ethiopian eunuch was a worshipful man. You think about this. He went to Jerusalem. Now he's from Ethiopia. Ethiopia, I checked this out, folks. I checked this out on the map. 
He didn't have a Cadillac Escalade to take him up to Jerusalem from Ethiopia. He didn't have a, a, a jet, a Learjet or a, a Citation. Uh, he didn't have any of that take him up to Jerusalem. He didn't have a Ford Bronco to take him up to Jerusalem. He had a chariot. Can you imagine that? 1,500 miles in a chariot. 1,500 miles. Why did he do that? To worship. That's right. He went to Jerusalem to worship. He's on his way back. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you'd say, well, man, that, that, that's tremendous. God ought to be looking down on him and patting him on the back saying, God bless you, brother. You took all that energy and all that effort. You went up to Jerusalem. Boy, God bless you, man. You're, no. You know what happened? On his way back, Philip heard him read from Scripture. Do you understand what you read? He said, how can I accept some man should guide me? Come up here and sit with me. And, tell, and tell, began at the same Scripture and he preached unto him Jesus. As they went on their way, they came to a surfing water. He said, see, here's water. What hinders me to be baptized? And Philip said, if, thou, if you believe, if thou believest, thou may. He said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They commanded the chariot to stand still. They both went down the water, both fell to you, and he baptized him. He came up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord called away Philip. The eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I need to recognize who is a Christian. Here is a Christian. A Christian is an individual who has had faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, a Christian is an individual who with that faith has changed his life by repentance. He has confessed the name of Christ before men and he has been baptized into Jesus Christ for the remission of his sins. That is a Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, when you and I look at that, you know the Bible, if any man suffer as a Christian, you know, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Matthew chapter number 28, what did Jesus tell them? He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations. Now when you go teach all nations, you pass out a card. Give everybody a card and say, now what? Uh, well, it, it, bow your head, raise your hand if you want to be saved. No, no. Uh, well, if they bow your head. Well, then which church they want? No, no. Here's what Jesus said. You go into all the world and you preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15 says. Matthew 28 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Okay, now ladies and gentlemen, look at this. We have defined denomination. That's separation. Denomination is division. Uh, and so then we looked at this concept just uh, a minute ago. We backed up and we had, well, who is a Christian? Well, we know that a Christian is one who is baptized into Christ. Now, when he is baptized into Christ, he's added to the church. We read that in Acts 2 and verse number 47. So let's define church. In Matthew 16, verses 13 through 18, you remember Jesus said, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And some say, Well, thou art Elias, or John the Baptist, or one of the prophets. He said to them, Whom do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered, said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood, had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. What's this? And upon this rock... I will build some churches. No. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What is the church? Ladies and gentlemen, the church is the body of Christ. The Bible tells us there are many members, yet one body. Uh, the, for an example, when you and I go to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4, uh, the Bible says, For whom, listen to this, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, 
according to the effectual working of the measure in every part under the edifying of itself in love. Now we know the church is the body of Christ. The Bible says there's many members, yet one body. You and I, members of the body of Christ, when? Now watch this. When Larry Acuff believes in Jesus as Son of God, repents of his sins, confesses the name of Christ, is baptized for the remission of sin, I'm added to the church. Well, which one? There's only one. I'm added to the church that Jesus died for. In Ephesians 5, 25, the Bible says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. When a man or a woman is baptized into Christ for the remission of their sin, they are added to the church of Christ. Somebody said, well, you sound like you're the only one going to heaven. Everybody else going to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. The church of Jesus Christ is going to heaven. I know that. The church of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15, 24, Then the end shall come when he shall have delivered up the kingdom unto God, even the Father. What is the kingdom? It's the church. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody said, well, I, I'm in this church. Right? No, listen, listen. The church does the same thing. The church of Christ, it doesn't matter whether it's in the state of Georgia, Tennessee, whether it's in Japan or Russia. The church of Christ does the same thing. It meets on the first day of the week. It worships God in spirit and in truth. It has communion every first day of the week. It sings and makes melody in your heart. They give and they preach the gospel of Christ and they pray. The Bible teaches us, ladies and gentlemen, that the church is the body of Jesus Christ. There are not 45,000 bodies. There are only one. So you and I need to understand, what is the church? It's the body of Christ. And so therefore, being the body of Christ, He is the head of it. Colossians 1.18, who the Bible says, He is head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. All right, now let's define one more word. Let's define salvation. In Ephesians 1 verse number 7, the Bible says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. So when you and I, so what is salvation? What is salvation? Well, ladies and gentlemen, salvation is saved from your past sins. That's what it is. You know, when you and I, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, wherefore by one man sin in the world, death by sin, therefore death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Sin separates a man from God, all unrighteousness is sin. There's no man upon this earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Sin again keeps a, so how do we get back together? How, what is salvation? Coming into contact, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one thing that'll save us. Only one. That's the blood of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you come into contact with the blood of Jesus? Bible tells you. Bible tells you. This is a mystery. That first statement I read at the beginning of this lesson, well, you know, uh, you know, that's, we're not, the Bible doesn't, it's not, oh yeah, the Bible's very clear. Man is the unclear one, folks. Now, read with me, Romans chapter number six. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, watch this, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that the old man has been crucified. Now watch this. The Bible says in that chapter, going down to verse 16, But God be thanked, you were the servants of sin, but you've obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine that was delivered to you. Being then made freed from sin, you became a servant of righteousness. You obeyed from the heart what? That form, death, burial, and resurrection. How do you do that? When you're baptized into Christ, you become dead to the world, you're buried in water, 
and you're resurrected to walk a new life. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to become a Christian. I want to encourage you to be baptized for the remission of sin and be added to the Lord's church, not a denomination. Thank you very much. Speaking on this program is Jim Dearman. A fool will lose tomorrow looking back on yesterday. That line from a popular song years ago contains truth. There are times when looking back on yesterday may be helpful if it enables us to avoid mistakes in the future. However, dwelling upon the mistakes or sins of the past is not good if those sins have been forgiven by God. By the same token, past successes should not cause us to rest upon our laurels, so to speak. The child of God knows that when he has done all he can do, he has not earned his salvation, nor can he rest from his labors of love. Paul summarized it this way, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto the things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm Jim Dearman with a brief message of Truth for the World. Welcome to a time of Bible readings and hymns with your host, David Kenny of the Wadsworth Church of Christ. Speech on. Wallet. Button. Notes. Sound recognition. NFC. Code scan. Apple. Camera. Hearing device. Flashlight. Timer. Button. Music recognition. Selected. Screen recording.